Hey guys, welcome. Some of you welcome back. Today's video, the F4. Now, for some of you guys that know me, I focus completely, 100% on the FM, the flight model. But before I get into this video, I want to say one thing. I've used the California 382 livery for this F4 in testing. That's all I've flown so far. The reason being is because this is an actual plane that I go visit all the time. I've actually put out some videos about the F4 using this plane. And I've made my own liveries before, but for the developer to actually come out with a livery of an airplane I know, I can touch, I find that very special. Okay, now that I've talked about that, let's get into this video. First things first, this is only a part one video that focuses on the FM. There will be a part two video that focuses on dogfighting the F4. So let's get started. First is going to be a normal takeoff. This is a combat takeoff, about 45,000 pounds. Just gonna hold the brakes, go to full power, let the afterburner light, light up, and then let go of the brakes. Let it accelerate. Initially, you might have to use differential braking to keep it on the center line. Do not use no steering on takeoff. As it accelerates above 100, 120, you want to pitch, pitch that nose up and bring it up to about 10 degrees pitch. That's that's the AOA this airplane needs to take off in in real life. And then just let it lift off on its own. As it lifts off, you got a positive rate. Get those landing gear up. Now once the landing gear comes up, the airplane does tend to accelerate a little bit too fast, I think. And then you want to get those flaps up before uh, 280. Once everything is up, keep that afterburner in until above 350. After 350, you can reduce that afterburner and then keep it at a military power as needed. Now I'm going to do a second takeoff. This is going to be a heavyweight takeoff, almost fully loaded airplane here. After burner, let the brakes go. Engine's good, airspeed's coming alive. Now, there's a little bit of difference here. Uh, not on the takeoff, because we're still going to pitch up at about 10 degrees nose up. 101, 102, 103. Ah, I'm just kidding. Keep that nose up there. You need that angle of attack to give you lift. And then as the airplane lifts off, it's heavy. It's going to start wobbling. At this point, the rudder, do not use ailerons here just use the rudder keep to keep those wings level and I'll, I'll tell you why a little bit later why you don't want to use the ailerons Here's at the these higher angles of attack so just keep it there let it stabilize landing gear is up keep an eye on that acceleration get those flaps up keep the afterburner in but until about 350 375 and then you can reduce the military power and set up for a climb but a heavyweight takeoff is a little bit different so just keep an eye on it be ready for that airplane to slowly lift off be ready for that instability for that roll. Very, very nicely done by the HP. I love that instability on takeoff, especially at heavy weights. Now the next thing I do after takeoffs on a new plane is I put it in a minimum controllable airspeed. This is the slowest airspeed airplane can fly level flight. And why do I do this? Several reasons. The biggest reason is to get used to the airplane when it is slow, like on landings. This is where the airplane is wobbly. This is where the airplane is sluggish. You want to get used to this because this is what the airplane is going to be like on landings. Now, this is not something interesting to watch, but I'll show you a couple of things that I found here. I started about 160 knots and then slowly brought it down. So I came to about 150, and that is kind of the lower limit of this airplane at this weight, about 42,000 pounds. So at this weight, about 150, 145 maybe is the slowest it can go without losing altitude. And these numbers are accurate, so the HB did a good job on, on this part. Now, I did put my inputs on, off to the side. You can see that, and I left that because people have asked that for that before, and there's a reason for it. One thing, if you, if you can notice anything there, and I know it's hard to see, I am not using any ailerons. In this, this is all rudders, and there's a reason for that. I'm used to it. At any low air speeds, I start using the rudders because if you use ailerons at higher angles of attack, you will stall one wing. Now here comes another roll, basically I, I lost control here and the airplane rolled over and it happens when you get to these low air speeds. This is actually a stall, a wing stall, so let me talk a little bit about this now because we're getting into some very important stuff with regards to the F4. So when you have a high angle of attack, you don't want to use ailerons, the reason being is the ailerons do change the angle of attack of the wing, so if you're already at a high angle of attack and use the ailerons, it will stall one of the wings. Let me show you what happens here. High angle of attack, high angle of attack, almost a stall, 
here I go full aileron to one side and there goes the airplane rolling to the other side and that is a good implementation of a stall of a one wing due to the aileron input so the same thing let's try it on the other side and you can see the wing rolls to the opposite side in this case the left roll so this is a good implementation of this actual aerodynamic phenomenon where you don't want to use those ailerons at high angles of attack now let's talk about the stalls themselves so stalls when you talk about stalls stalls is not about airspeed stalls happen when there is insufficient airflow over the wings on the f4 it happens for slow speed stalls happens at about 30 units of AOA and uh, for accelerated stalls it can happen anywhere between 28 and 30 and above so how did HB implement this? The manual says the stalls are not really stalls they are auto rolls what that means is it was going to roll to one side or the other uh, the also mentions that the stalls are not very violent they're pretty smooth on one side or, or the other one thing I found out is okay so if we're going here if we're, if we're do, turning 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 we're gonna pull 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 we're not in the afterburner here pull under 230 units AOA here comes the stall basically rolls over that is correct it's nothing crazy but the F4 will do that it will roll to one or the other side depending on, on, the, on the angle of a slip that causes one wing to stall before the other and you get that auto roll that's pretty decent implementation nothing too crazy and you can see it happen so right now you saw that accelerated stall under 200 knots so far so good no afterburner what happens if I put the afterburner in so I put the afterburner in I'm pulling pulling here comes the wing drop and it's not doing a full roll now what I think is happening here is I don't believe that the F4 has stalls above 200 knots so I believe they coded them under 200 knots above 200 knots it just coded not to stall and you can see that later as I'm above 200 and just pulling 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 I'm also reaching 30 units of AOA and it's still not stalling and I don't think that's 100% correct there the accelerated stall in the F4 can happen almost at any speed as long as the AOA units are above 28 units now I know it has a dampener and actually dampener works good on the F4 to slow down and prevent these stalls at higher speeds and when you pull that stick all the way back it dampens it doesn't go to full deflection on, on the elevator to get that nose up and that prevents the high AOA or immediate high angle of attack and that's actually done more to protect the engine the air intake the engines are very sensitive to it if you go to a high angle of attack fast on the F4 which HB has coded you will get a stall on the engine so that is done to actually prevent the engine stall but in this case helps with a stall talking to this F4 pilot he said I've departed during combat and I've seen him depart during combat even about 280, 290, maybe 300 knots so there is this gap I think on the HB where the stalls are happening correctly under 200 knots but not above, not about 280 a little more expansion on the stalls I believe and this F4 would be perfect in that area one thing I do want to mention is that I found out there is the situation where I can actually slow it down to I don't know about 100, 100 knots or so, maybe less, and I'm at this very steep nose up. I got the afterburners going, and I am keeping that nose up, and the plane is not falling down. Now it's kind of hard to get it into it, but once you do, yeah, this is something that's more like a bug than than anything else. I did a little bit of a higher altitude testing and I did not see any differences. I don't think there's any specific high altitude coding in the F4. Flying at above 35, 40,000 feet, the aerodynamics do change quite a bit. Now having said all that, this also doesn't affect the DCS plate too much since most are going to be under 35,000 feet most of the time. There's not going to be too many dogfights up there. But it's also good to have some realistic flight dynamics up at these higher altitudes because it makes the flying up here so much more interesting.
Okay, so so far I've been looking at the edges of the F4. Like, how does it behave at those very, very edges of the envelope? And for the most part, HP did an awesome, awesome job. So now I'm going to kind of try to focus on turning and climbing capabilities before we go into something else. So first, turning capabilities. I tested it at about 5,000 feet. This is combat weight as they had it for 42,000 pounds, I believe. Four missiles as per the graph. And as you can see, these are the results that I got in its right on the line where it should be. Developers match the turning capabilities at 5,000 feet perfectly. Now, I also did this at 15,000 feet, and the capabilities are right there, right there on the line. I mean, I'm pretty decent at testing these. I'm pretty accurate. There's still some user error, but as you can see, the, the test results here fall right on that line where it should be. I did also do this at 30,000 feet. At 30,000 feet, I didn't see a graph, but I kind of know what the numbers should be. And they're about five, six degrees per second here for the most part. At 30,000 feet, there should be maybe a degree or so more, maybe six to seven degrees. Then again, at 30,000 feet, uh, not many people are gonna do many dogfights up there, so it's kind of hard to do it. But yeah, you can see at, at 30,000 feet, a little bit underperforming, whereas 5,000, 15,000, it's, it's right on the money. Rate turns here, what I showed, is just one part of the turning capabilities of the airplane. And it's an important part, but there's a second part to this that a lot of developers sometimes don't pay attention to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a maximum instantaneous turn here for about 420, 430. I want to just give it a full pull. Here we go. Pull it and then let it shake. Maximum AOA. And we're going to slow down to about 250 or so. And then we look at the time they took down to slow down. Uh, it, it took about 9 seconds. And that is a very important to remember, 9 seconds. And if we look at how many degrees we turn in those 9 seconds, it's about 130 degrees. And looking at the design of the wings of the F4, and looking at the lift and drag and all that capabilities, that is exactly correct. You need about 9 seconds, about 130 degrees or so. That is right on the money. And that's also very important. It doesn't show up on the graph, but it's very important in the capability of the airplane because it gives you the drag, the correct drag, when you're doing that uh, high G turn. Because you get a lot of AOA, you got 14, 15 degrees AOA, and that's going to slow down the airplane like four air brakes. There's just no way, no engine is big enough that's going to push that airplane and without slowing down. So this part is also very accurate on the F4 and I'm very, very glad to see this because there's way too many modules in DCS that don't seem to slow down when you're pulling these high angle of attack high Gs. Uh, another thing I'm going to test is the climb capability. This is going to be a vertical climb and this is very important. This is where you test to see how good a module in DCS is. I'm going to go 15,000 feet. And it works out for just about every airplane. 15,000 feet, I'm going to go full power, afterburner. 450 knots, I'm going to lift that nose up straight up vertical. And I'm going to keep it vertical right up until we get to about 250 knots. At that point, I'm going to start pulling it over and then I'm going to level up on the top. started at 15,000 feet combat weight I'm at about 31,000 feet right now so how does that compare to the real one it's right up there as a matter of fact slight underperformance uh, actual one would end up at about 32,000 32,500 in this position could be user error but I got it to about 31,500 so about within a thousand feet what you're gonna find out for a lot of modules and in DCS they actually overperform in this vertical so so hats off to heat blur here on this one for getting it right on the money okay so we've come to the end this is gonna be the last thing that I show it's gonna be a landing I'm about 38,000 39,000 pounds coming back from a mission about 30 percent fuel I do have external fuel tanks that are empty and my weapons on there which are air missiles but aside from that it's a pretty light plane and as I'm approaching here on the final what we're looking for is 10 degrees AOA 
the way we get that 10 degrees air away, there's several things that tell you what's going on. One, you have the little uh, symbols right next to the hood on the left side of the hood. You also have the angle of attack meter. It measures units. Uh, one is 1.67 degrees, so at about 17 degrees is where you want to keep that. That will give you that nice 10 degrees AOA approach. And then you want to set that power. The airspeed depends really on, on the weight that you have. In this case, it's about 170, 175, and that seems to be working out. I'm not even actually paying attention to the airspeed. What I'm looking at is the AOA, and that's what I'm using to gauge my, my throttle. And then as we get close, you do want to keep that power in. I mean, the F4 will sink pretty quick, so keep that power in just before touchdown. And then I'm just going to reduce the power in the flare right there, and flare just a little bit, 2 degrees. You get that done up about 13 degrees AOA touchdown and that's it man you just kissed the runway nice and Jester seems to like it so one thing I do want to mention is this is part one of the video there will be part two of this video which will be a dogfight I will actually fight it against a MiG-17 that is the module MiG-17 that's slated to come out sometime later so when we're matching these two up this will be a great, perfect Vietnam matchup in, in that video. And MiG-17 will give us the opportunity to kind of show how the F-4 Phantom should fight. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Take care, and I'll see you guys soon. That landing just brought a tear to my eye.